In this video, I want to take a look at the shortcodes function in WooCommerce and then do an overall evaluation of this shopping cart plugin. All right, shortcodes. There's a little button that WooCommerce creates here when you're on a page or a post in WordPress, and it's called Insert Shortcode. And it has this drop down menu here. There's various things you can add in here. Now, we've seen how we've used these shortcodes already. Remember, we had to create pages because they didn't automatically get created just because we'd had JigoShop already installed. But normally they would be. But we had to go in and manually put the cart, the checkout, all these different short codes into the pages. So we saw that, but there's also some other things you can do here, for example. Let's say, for instance, that I was talking about something on a totally different page of the site, which actually isn't in the catalog itself. And I mention a particular product, maybe in a post, I mention the product, let's say. So I could go in here and I could add a short code and it says product by SKU and ID. So it automatically puts this in for you, but there's no way to choose which product other than by going back over here to your products and finding, remember that ID number that it shows here? Well, this is where it comes in really handy. Let's do our plate here, our morning harvest plate. 363 is our ID. Okay, so I go over here and I put in 363 in the ID, not the SKU. You could do it by SKU number. I prefer to do it by ID because it's always there. Now watch what happens. I hit update and then I refresh over here on my live site. I refresh my sample page. Now nothing's happened. Now why is that? Well, this is something that's not really pointed out for you and it wasn't even in the documentation that I could find. You have to choose one or the other and get rid of the one you're not using. So in this case, I chose ID, so I have to get rid of my SKU. Now watch what happens. When I come back over to here and refresh, I now have my product. So it basically shows the catalog listing for the product, not the entire page. Now you can go to WooCommerce, and they have a pretty good outline of short codes here, how to use them. And what you'll discover is there's a couple of short codes that actually aren't in the dropdown, one of which is the complete product page. If I just put underscore page on here, if I go back to the page itself, and I put product underscore page, and I update it, it will actually now insert the entire page. Now, I don't know exactly where you're going to use that because you've already got it in the catalog as a full page, but it's available. It's possible to use it. I think it's much more likely that you're going to want to do something like showing some products relating to what you're talking about, again, in a post or in another descriptive page that isn't part of your catalog. Let's say, for example, I want to show a group of products, products by a category. Let's do the category slug here. So it offers us some options here, how many items to show per page, columns, and so forth. But you've got to fill in the category here, okay? And to do that, you need the slug for the category. What's the slug? Well, let's go over here. Now, the slug is over here, so you just have to grab this, and let's say it's wooden bowls, okay? Now, it's hard to grab this. I think the easiest way is to go into quick edit there. I just go into quick edit and grab that. Did you see how we did that? You just mouse over and click quick edit. Okay, I come back over to here. I plug in this, the category of wooden bowls. I update. And now my page is going to show anything in that category. Now, in this case, there's only one. But it would show them all here in rows, as many as I've got. And again, that could be really handy. Maybe I'm talking about wooden bowls and how to take care of wooden bowls in a post or page, I could add this to the bottom so that customers could quickly go and buy some of my products. So these short codes here can be kind of handy when you've got more than just your catalog on the site. You could show recent products, featured products. Very, very handy little thing to have, but just watch some of the syntax can get a little tricky sometimes, and you may not have all the details in the help section. All right, let's go through WooCommerce itself. One of the things I really liked about WooCommerce was it had pretty good documentation, especially compared to JigoShop. 
the one that it was built on originally. So it's pretty extensive and lots of good codes. They have little snippets here if you're trying to fix things. They've got some codes that will help you customize or change things. So I think WooCommerce is a great plugin overall. Lots and lots of great features right out of the box. I found that very, very powerful. Even if you didn't need to change anything, you'd have a full functioning shopping cart right off the bat. It had more flexible shipping options than JigoShop. That was one thing I liked. You couldn't do exactly individual product shipping, but you got pretty close to it. A comprehensive and easy to use order management system. I found it easier to use than JigoShop. Customizable email notifications. This was really important because I like to have good interaction with customers and to be able to control how they get notified and the look of it and the structure was very important to me. And basic color styling using a WYSIWYG interface. Very, very handy if you just want to customize the basic colors of the WooCommerce shopping cart. Taking a look now at the cons for WooCommerce, what were some of those? Well, the tax classes didn't seem to work as promised. I couldn't get two classes to add together when I needed to. Subcategory display options behaved, I thought, rather oddly. You either showed all the products and no subcategories, or if you showed the subcategories, it showed all the products, which I didn't want necessarily. So I didn't quite have the flexibility that I'd hoped for. And I didn't find the on-screen help very good. The documentation on their website's quite good, but right there on the admin screens of WooCommerce, I didn't find that help very good. And finally, let's look at the true cost of WooCommerce. It is a free plugin, and as I say, it works great out of the box, works well with a lot of themes right out of the box, but I suspect a lot of people are going to want a specialized theme just for WooCommerce, and that's going to cost you some money. There are a couple free ones, but the nicer ones are priced around $70 or so. So let's say $70. You're probably going to want a couple of shipping extensions to make your shipping much easier and much more accurate. Those were about $50 each, so there's another 100 And then miscellaneous extensions, well, these ones weren't quite as important as I thought they might have been in, say, Jigo Shop, but still, a lot of them were nice enhancements that you're probably going to want at some point. So I'm saying they're another $70 or so. So be prepared to spend some extra money when you're using WooCommerce, even though it is a free plugin.